Hey Rally Fighter fans, Kate here with Local Motors. Today we are talking Rally Fighter coilovers in the micro factory. So guys, where do we start with uh, what we do to this shock before it actually goes on the Rally Fighter? All right, Kate, so there's just a few things that I actually have to do before we actually put them on the car. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just break it all down for you guys, and Galen is actually gonna go ahead and go into more detail about everything that I do to it. So I'm gonna just rip it apart real quick. And what are you starting with? So I'm just gonna push the preload ring up a little bit so I can get my retainer off. I mean, I report, I'm surprised a lot. So I can get my springs off, because it's a little easier to move the crossover rings once your springs are taken off. Okay. So as you can see there's two springs on this shock. So and uh, Galen, why is there two springs? Uh, the reason there's two springs is actually for tunability. Um, there is uh, generally a stiff rate and a softer rate, but sometimes uh, for tuning reasons they're actually be the, the same rate. Um, and then we have a crossover collar here which goes in between the springs. And when the shock cycles, um, it'll be compressing both the springs at the same time and they're acting together and will be acting as a soft rate. But what happens is when this collar in between the springs mm -hmm. compresses to the point where it hits these, these are the crossover adjusters. Okay. When it hits those, the top spring can no longer compress. And so therefore, it will only be compressing the lower spring and acting stiffer. Because it's not compressing full spring, so it's not a combined spring rate. It's then just a primary spring rate. And so that gives you a huge tuning advantage as far as how the vehicle will um, not only compress, but when the shock is rebounding, how the energy comes back out through the suspension. Okay, is that one of the reasons that it's a great shock to use on the Rally Fighter? Yes, and, and most companies uh, building trucks or cars these days use some sort of a, a dual rate setup. Okay, and what are you gonna do next, Riley? All right, well, once I get these set, okay, so for the Rally Fighter, I have to set these crossover rings at 10 and a quarter from the bottom of our blue ring. Okay, so I'm pretty close. I'm actually a little high. Okay. So I need to back it off a little now, bit. Now, how did you guys come up with that number? Uh, we actually <laughs> took a car and went out with King to Barstow and we uh, did some testing. So basically what King does is because they make their shocks, they obviously know all about them, right? Okay, so uh, we go ahead and go out with them into the desert and uh, we run the car and they can help us determine where we want to start our second spring in our travel. Okay. okay. So basically once I have those set, I'll be ready to go. It's almost perfect. Okay. okay so I just got to make sure they're nice and tight. Okay. So now Kinda they won't even. move. So those grooves have to uh, match. No, they don't actually. Okay. No, that's, those are basically just for adjustment. So okay. they don't have to match. They just ended up matching this time. Okay. Okay. So now we got to put our springs back on and go ahead and set our preload. So Galen can explain to you exactly what the preload does. Preload's mainly a, a ride height setting. Um, that's its main purpose. If you're using real soft springs, it, it's important that your preload is uh, set so your, your ride height's correct. But um, it's also a good way to tell if your springs are too soft or too stiff. If you have no preload, obviously your springs are on the verge of being too stiff. If you have several inches of preload, um, your springs are too soft, you may have to go to a different rate or um, mess with your primary and secondary rates. Okay, and what are some consequences of having the wrong preload? Um, if it's uh, too soft, like too soft to spring and you have a lot of preload, you're gonna have a lot of basically pitching in the car uh, when you're on the brakes. So that's kind of a trait of a linked vehicle on long travel anyway, and it'll be worse, more visible, um, to the point where the car just looks goofy when you're on the brakes. Um, also a result of that is when you have all that weight transfer and it's so extreme, you can lose traction in the rear. So if you're braking, the rear end can get loose. Um, if you're accelerating and it pitches back, you lose steering. Okay. All right, so for our rally fighter, 
we have to set our preload ring down two and a quarter inches from our blue ring. Okay, and this is actually a pretty tough part. Sometimes you have to use actual uh, spring compressors to compress the springs down to get your ring to go down far enough. But luckily for us, our preload's pretty mellow, so we can just crank it down. Okay. okay so I'm pretty close right now. I'm gonna do a few more and double check it. Okay. Got a quarter inch to go. Okay, perfect. That's right. good. <laughs> okay. All right, so now we just need to make sure we tighten up our Allen. Okay. Okay, so then our preload ring won't move on us. Okay, so it'll be set. Right. Okay. All right. So basically, all we have to do now is go ahead and charge the shock. Okay, okay. so the shocks are filled with gas, and Galen, can I explain why there's gas in the shock? So when a shock compresses, this shaft right here actually goes inside the body of the shock. Okay. And the fluid for, you know, physical purposes cannot be compressed. So if this shaft is taking up the space in here, there has to be some room for this, you know, material to displace in here. Okay. And so what we have is a remote reservoir here, mm -hmm. which is, you can see the Schrader valve right here. That's what Riley's gonna charge up with gas. Okay. Um, it fills most of the reservoir. And there's actually a piston right about here um, that separates the nitrogen gas from all the oil that's in here. Okay. And the reason why that's separated is when um, the truck or vehicle is, is moving around going over bumps, um, the nitrogen doesn't get mixed in and emulsified with the oil because if that's the case, then this, this viscous fluid is no longer that certain weight anymore. So then you get what's called shock vapor, which is really bad. That's horrible for off-road tuning. What is that? It's basically when, when your shock loses damping. So that, that force that is damping um, your springs from rebounding and on compression that basically gives a vehicle its handling feel, that goes away. But Sounds bad. Yeah, that's, <laughs> again, it goes back to the whole pitching thing. The right. car can get pitchy, unpredictable. You then have these these long springs and this long travel suspension that's no longer controlled, and it can preload and, and buck and do a lot of bad stuff. And probably damage the car. Yes, it could damage the car. Cars, you know, flip. It's it's not predictable anymore. So it's it's really important. Okay. So okay. let's charge it. Alright, so our rally fighter shocks get charged to 200 psi. Okay. So, 200 on our gauge. And then, if you want to go ahead yep. and screw this out for me, Kate. Here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason why we filled up to 200 is that's kind of like our, our constant pressure um, to set everything at. And <laughs> it's fine, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> I've never done this before. <laughs> it's our constant pressure that we set everything at. Um, uh -huh. and, and the increased pressure, you might be asking well, why 200 psi, why not 100? Yep. When you have more uh, pressure inside this reservoir, it helps prevent cavitation, which is also another way a shock can fade out. Um, by actually boiling the shock fluid that's inside here momentarily on really hard hits. So that's another um, bad thing that can happen to shocks and by running 200 PSI it helps prevent that. Got it, and, and of course it's for consistency. So is this shock now ready to go on a rally fighter? Yes it is. Right on, well let's get this one on a rally fighter. And for more videos just like this one on the rally fighter, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the conversation bubble or if you're on a mobile device, just scroll to the comment section and click on the subscribe now link. If you're watching this video on Facebook, like it and share it with your friends.